All right. Hello, everybody. So in this video, um, continuing with our tuning series for the LT4 supercharger, <clears throat> I want to um, go over the base configuration changes. So uh, as you guys know, um, in a previous video, uh, I did create an initial uh, start tune uh, for the for the vehicle, um, you know, that way just, and really, you can go back and reference that video and see exactly what I did, but the biggest thing was just um, copying over some of the, the base parameters um, due to the intake manifold changing, uh, you know, the, <clears throat> the volume of that intake manifold has changed, um, the area of the throttle body is different since I got the LT4 throttle body on there, so in any case, uh, you can go back and reference that video to see exactly what was done, but that was just initial start tune just to kind of a safeguard so when I actually start the truck I don't got to worry about things going seriously wrong and um, so after that the, the goal was is to start uh, dialing in um, things to make sure it's the truck can at least get to a drivable condition so I can start with the or so I can continue on with the tuning process meaning I can uh, start uh, getting into the map tuning and speed density and all that stuff um, so yeah, here's here's actually the initial start. Um, so, anyways, let's let's jump into other changes I had to make uh, for the base configuration. So, you know, the the initial start tune did just that; it worked fine, allowing me to safely uh, after I had the supercharger installed, uh, that was finished, um, allowed me to safely run the engine, which you guys um, hopefully saw in, in the initial start um, video. But after that, there was some things that some additional changes I need to make. I needed to make. Um, so one of those was with the idle changes, um, and let's see what that was. Was back over here, so we're in the VC editor here, and there was um, the uh, the uh, the idle for. Um, the, the, the current idle I had in there was a little bit lower than, than what uh, the LT4 um, Z06 uses. And you can kind of tell it was not too happy with that. I think the old idle was, I don't know, somewhere around 500, 570. Um, and you could just, I could just hear, and you could probably hear it in the video. I mean, timing was one of the big things that was the, causing the noise difference in the. Uh, the, initial, the initial start video, but uh, another one was just the idle, just made it sound kind of kind of rough. Um, so figured I'd go and look at what the Z06 and LT4 uses for for their idle, and again using the same uh, methodology from the initial start tune. So I went to the uh, back using HP HP Tuners repository. I uh, pulled down some stock files. <clears throat> and uh, grabbed the tables out of that for the idle and, and changed made those changes for the park neutral and um, also for um, for auto start um, or sorry not auto start for in gear so um, so that was one thing that really helped out with the idle um, the next thing I, that I needed to look into uh, let's go back here Let's see, so, okay, so that at least allowed me to get to a point where I can start the truck safely, have it idle and sound decent, you know, it still needed some work, but at least be able to put it in gear and start getting it down the road, and that's, the, you know, it's, it's baby steps at this point with such, uh, with such dramatic changes that this project did to the vehicle. <clears throat> So um, that allowed me to at least get the, the vehicle in gear and then start driving it at least around in a, in a safe area. Uh, so for me, that was starting off just here in my neighborhood um, where I can drive at really low speeds. Don't got to worry about dealing with traffic. So if my truck all of a sudden goes in limp mode, you know, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not um, a, uh, causing any issues on the road. And, that, and that's pretty important. Uh, you want to just start off slow and start off uh, simple and in a safe area. We're not going to be a road hazard. You don't want to go jump after doing this. Go jump on the freeway, and think you're going to hit 70 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, you're, 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 for whatever reason, your, your vehicle fails, and now your 
driving at like 15 miles an hour on a, on a four-lane highway where people are doing like 80, 90 around you. So um, basically what that meant for me is, you know, driving around the neighborhood, just kept grabbing my log, logging my information, just, just keeping an eye on how things are going. And one of the first issues that came up was um, I was getting a P0068 uh, error. And it didn't happen a lot uh, where I saw it the most. So I, I live in a neighborhood that's got some flat areas, but it's also got a lot of little hills. And that's where I really started to see um, this issue pop up. And it started driving me nuts. Because, I mean, the, the, the problem was right in front of me. It was telling me what the issue was, but I just wasn't paying attention. So, you know, I would... I would Go, things were going good. I'd be out driving, and at this point, you know, I haven't turned, I haven't gone into the tuning mode where I've turned off my adaptive controls for fuel and you know, and all that stuff. This is just, just, um, just throwing the tune in there and starting it up and going. And, um, and I'm wanting to, and what I'm basically trying to do at that point is just grab logs and check my airflows, check my timing, check my, my, my feeling at this point. You know, I got, I got the uh, wideband installed at this point and just checking that. And I, you know, I'm really counting on getting that information back so I can go back and uh, make any necessary changes and just keep progressing forward. Well, what I notice is when I start to climb up just the slightest of an incline, I mean, not even like two degrees, um, and it kind of depends on RPM, the vehicle just immediately go into limp home mode. Um, so luckily it was in the neighborhood because if you guys have ever experienced that, I mean, that thing just comes to almost a stop. You know, you're, you're, <laughs> you can barely go like five miles an hour or, or whatever speed it went into. You're, you're not going to go any faster. Um, so it took me a, a little bit to finally realize what I needed to do. But the fix is actually relatively simple, and I don't think I've came across any videos yet that covered this um, specifically. And again, this is for an L83. Um, more importantly, this is for the Gen 5 ECM. Uh, so this would be your LT LT1s, LT4s, your L83s, L86s, all of that. And so I'll show you how I was able to, to uh, resolve that issue. And what it came down to is uh, not an engine, but over here in engine diagnostics in the airflow. <clears throat> and and uh, quite nicely, there's a category dedicated just to P0068. And this is really all the fix was. And what it was telling me was my map delta was, you know, my re the relationship between what the map sensor was reading and what my throttle position sensor was at were just way the heck off. And it was just, the computer didn't like it. And I was like, hey, there's an issue. We're going to shut you down and you're going to have to limp home. Um, so to resolve that was, you know, I didn't just go in here and start bumping numbers up because that really doesn't help because I don't know what my ceiling is. You know, I, you really, I really wanted to log and understand, okay, where's the ceiling of, what's the max this thing can go? And so what I decided to do is just log that. And so how I did that is I came over here to my to my uh, data tables and so I made some, some new, uh, I basically just uh, created these data tables based off of ECM editor. So for example here in the, um, the, the max map. Now one thing to note that's unfortunate about this, unlike your, your other logs, is these values do not save uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, as soon as you turn off the ignition, these values go away. Uh, maybe someone out there knows how to persist them, but so what I, I just had to, um, what I did was before shutting off the engine, I'd make sure I grabbed these values and copied them somewhere so I had reference to them. Um, so what you can see here, going back to VC matter, map delta really was what the problem was. Yeah. No, maybe not right now. Shut the door, please. Um, so I basically just made the same table. So you can see here, um, it's this map max delta, and it's uh, just this throttle position and percentage. So that's what I created. And, you, and, and what this z-axis is, what I mean by z-axis is the, the cell itself is the um, is in kilopascals. So it's the map in kilopascals. Um, so what I did was I just created a table for that. Um, let's see, this is yeah, map, map versus delta. So this is actually probably just go into the layout here. Bring this over and max map delta. Yeah, okay. 
so you can see here from my z-axis I was recording manifold absolute pressure in kilopascals and that's important and a lot of folks you already know that to give the units the same as what uh, your VC emitter is set up for and then the other pit I was um, was capturing was the the throttle position and percentage and then just like we do with all of the other data tables I just copied the um, the uh, the column headers um, off of the off of this guy to uh, to get the uh, percentages um, so copy those labels so um, so yeah that was it was really quite that simple so I would I would use I'd once I had this table set up this data table I'd just go out there and, and log it again and you know see where where things were at when it when it, when it failed and then um, would come in and you know grab these values uh, come back over to VSCM editor and uh, and make the changes that way and then just kept bumping it up until I got to a point where um, that issue just went away um, so that, that completely resolved the problem with this map delta P068 issue um, every once in a while I would get one I didn't get this before it was after I got the supercharger installed I was getting one for also the airflow um, so I just went ahead and model I just went ahead and recorded I made data tables for each one of these so you can see this one's for the map this one's for the math I went ahead and created it for the uh, for the MAF versus the ignition voltage and the MAF versus the RPM. Again, that's all coming from the uh, from these guys here. So this is for the uh, your MAF, your uh, airflow versus your RPM, <clears throat> your airflow versus your ignition voltage. So I just went ahead and you know what the heck it doesn't hurt to go ahead and create those tables, log them, and just make sure things are in check, and then made all the necessary changes um, to 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 get rid of that problem. So <clears throat> that uh, that definitely um, fixed the issue, resolved my problem with that, um, and I think that was pretty much it for the for any other base changes. Um, you know, once once I really got the uh, idle changes put in and these guys fixed, uh, I was I felt confident and safe enough at that point. To be able to take the vehicle out of the neighborhood and get into higher speeds, so from there I, I went ahead and started um, going on to just some of the roads here in town, you know, where I was getting you know the max speed of about 40, 45 miles an hour, and just started to I did that to just to gain some confidence, make sure that I wasn't going to get any little more limp home modes or making sure you know I wasn't getting any major knock, you know, stuff like that. It was just just kind of monitoring it, but. Um, but those those were the simple steps it took just to, to get the vehicle out of the garage into the neighborhood, driving around the neighborhood, and then from out of the neighborhood onto the streets um, into speeds where I felt confident and safe that everything was in, was going to be okay. And then you know after after I got the the logging to help um, you know qualitatively prove uh, or quantitatively prove that things were looking good, then I started uh, to get into the actual um, tune it to continue with an actual tuning process so um, yeah I think I'm gonna leave it at that uh, hopefully folks have find that helpful and if you do run into that P0068 maybe hopefully that'll help you um, see where that's coming from and, and know where you need to target uh, again this I'm really just speaking out of the, the gen 5 here but so uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. And um, again, if uh, you wanted to know how we created this, I created this initial start. Feel free to, to um, go back to the initial start uh, tuning video um, and have a look at that. And then also the initial start video itself, where we started the truck up for the first time. So if, yeah, if you guys have any other questions or have or have any questions, uh, feel free to just throw it in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.